This is Rostra, the St. Theodore Guerin Junior Classical League podcast, where we bring the lessons of classical study into the light for the benefit of all. Welcome back to another episode of Rostra. We've got uh, Max Thompson with us today, and if ever there was a building that people associate with ancient Rome, it is this one. So tell us, what are you talking about today, and, and also, and why did you pick this as a topic? So I'm going to be talking about the Colosseum today, and I've chosen a topic because I've actually been to the Colosseum, so I've been around... I've actually been in the tunnels underneath, which is really cool. But I just like just the size of the building and how it stayed like, around for so many years. It was just really fascinating to me. Okay, now I, I've got to be honest. I'm, I'm stopped on the point. And if you told me this before, I boy, I had forgotten. I don't think I knew that you'd been to the Coliseum. When did you go? Uh, I actually went this last summer. Really? Yes. Okay, so you've actually been there. So that is super cool. Uh, I distinctly remember the first time I went, I was leading a group of students, and the bus tour that we were on, getting ready to lead, let us out, it was like about a block away, and it kind of turned a corner, and I just saw the Coliseum come into view, and it's like, oh my goodness, this old friend, I've only seen pictures of, and now I get to see you for real, you know, so it, it was really, really cool. Um, so we'll get to the tunnels in just a moment. Um, what let's start off with your experience and we, we can talk about other stuff as well but um so when when you walked up to it and started walking into it what were your impressions well first of all when i saw it i was just overwhelmed so we we actually came from uh, above it first and then walked down to it so i got to look down on it oh. which was just absolutely amazing <laughs> and when i was up close to it, it it was probably one of the best buildings i've ever seen so there's a scene in that movie Gladiator, and uh, I, I love the scene when, when some of the gladiators, they first get to Rome, and they're looking around at the Colosseum, and one guy says, I did not know men could build such things. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it is extraordinary. So, uh, obviously, a lot has been destroyed over the years, and, you know, you've got all natural and human Efforts that have, have, have wrecked parts of it, uh, but obviously you can still go in. You can still see uh, stuff, and then the tunnels underneath. What's that all? Why, why are there tunnels underneath? So, oh, and you know what? If we're going to record during the school day, we have to expect a bell to interrupt us every once in a while. So there's there that is. So the tunnels underneath were not only to transport the actual gladiators around; it was to transport the animals and everything else that would fight. And it was actually in the summer they were super hot because they were not well ventilated. And in the winters, it was cold and damp. It was also really loud down there because all the footsteps from around, you can hear it just echo throughout the tunnels underneath. Sure, sure. So it wasn't just a locker room for the gladiators. Uh, you, you mentioned the animals as well because, um, well, and I don't know, I mean, you were really focused on the Coliseum, so I don't know that w what else you looked at. And we've talked a little bit about gladiators in class, but um, what kinds of fights did they have in the Coliseum? So they had a uh, man versus man fight. Just, right. That was mostly the main event. First, they, you'd usually start out with like men hunting animals fight. Yeah. And sometimes they would drain the nearby lake and have a naval fight. For, so they would recreate naval battles. Yeah. So, so I always think it's like, <laughs> this is terrible, but, but it's like, hey, I'm, I'm going to combine a hunting trip with a trip to the zoo. You know, I mean, if you could imagine, you know, taking taking your hunting stuff to the local zoo, we always want to see exotic animals. Humans have always enjoyed seeing animals. The Romans combined that, though, with, with blood sport. And so you would bring these exotic animals in, and you would have a hunt. You would stage a hunt right there uh, in front of the people. And then, of course, you mentioned the, um, the naval battles, which, uh, again, a lot of people have seen uh, historical reenactment stuff. Um, it's just that when we see historical reenactment, it's not real. <laughs> well, they had the real stuff going on, and so you would actually have battles, ships in the water that they uh, you know, had flooded the Colosseum with. Uh, so there's that, and of course, then, as you said, the, the man versus man stuff. Uh, so talk to us a little bit, a bit more about the Colosseum itself, uh, what you have found in terms of its uh, construction or anything else. So the Colosseum was 50 meters high, which is about four stories. 
and 156 meters wide and seated 70,000 people. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, we could, we could do the research, obviously. But, you know, if you, you think about a modern stadium, you know, uh, close to us, of course, uh, we're close to Indianapolis. We think about Lucas Oil Stadium and, you know, how many people that says. 70,000 people in that time to have constructed something of that size, to hold that many people. That was really extraordinary. I mean, it's not a small building project today, but it's certainly back then. So, yeah. And uh, the seating were the top of for the poorest people and women. And then it's the kind of cramped, like, when I watched, uh, when I did my research, it's kind of like the modern uh, American Airlines seats. That's how cramped they were. So very, very tight, right? Not, not a lot of notion of personal space. Um, and, and so the, and it kind of like today, I suppose, right? The, the best seats are on the 50-yard line, mm -hmm. right? You want to be down front, down close whether it's a concert or a sporting event, uh, same thing, right? So the cheaper seats are in the back, up high, and then uh, the, the wealthier people may be sitting, sitting down closer. Yep. The wealthiest seats were right seven feet up from the battle with a gated fence around to protect all the spectators from, blood, from animals trying to get out and just, just to make sure everyone was safe. Yeah, you, you don't want a tiger jumping out and mauling the crowd, right? You don't want a stray spear flying into the crowd and... Um, you know, I, I think about that, uh, like with uh, motor racing, uh, you know, all kinds of times crashes, right? Wheels will come off a car, uh, you know, tire goes flying. And, and so that's why they have lots of protection around the seats. The stuff doesn't come flying out. Same sort of thing, right? Yes. And um, when it was actually built, they were only made out of concrete, sand, and stone. And they had to actually build roads to get the stones in, that's how big the stones were. Yeah. And it only took 10 years, about 10 years to build because they started with the arches. So when they did all the arches, they got to build the top and the bottom at the same time, which really sped up the process. Wait, and again, you go, well, 10 years, golly, that's a long time. Not really when you think about the fact that you don't have modern equipment, <laughs> okay? We don't have all the modern stuff that would do the, the heavy lifting. Now, they did have machines, um, you know, what we call block and tackle machines, and uh, they did have, a, you know, pulley systems and so forth. But what was really powering all that was human muscle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's still completely human built in that way. So I actually think it's pretty good getting it done in just yes. 10 years. So, yeah. And the people that were building it were usually unskilled laborers and slaves, but right. also Roman, um, professional Roman builders, engineering artists, and painters to make sure they were doing the right things. And you mentioned, you know, the, certainly the engineering. Roman, Romans were, were great when it came to engineering um, with, with roads, bridges, aqueducts. They were very, very practical um, in, in engineering stuff. But you also mentioned artists. Um, and I don't know if you discovered this or not, but there were really different styles of columns going around the outside. It was an attractive building, right? It wasn't just, hey, here's, we're going to make a big old, you know, concrete circle and people can kill themselves in it. Um, it was, we're going to make a beautiful concrete circle for people to kill themselves. Uh, so there was that mix of, and it's, it's, it's that crazy thing. It, this is about death. This is about blood sport. And it really is a cruel, from our perspective, we would say a barbaric thing. Uh, and yet there was this civilized notion about the artistry of it. So it, it, it is a beautiful architectural building. So, yes. Yeah. And with the, um, with the arches, they took a, a lot from the Greeks because the Greeks really had their arches really stable and supportive, so they took a lot from the Greeks. Absolutely, and you know, you mentioned concrete earlier. Uh, that's the thing that Romans are famous for, is their concrete, uh, and how they really developed, um, really, really, for the first time, the kind of concrete that could, could build these massive buildings, hold that sort of weight, and then obviously last, all right? I, I, you know, so many American buildings, you know, after a decade, a couple decades or so, we're tearing that dude down, we're building something new. This thing has lasted for 2,000 years, so it's some pretty sturdy uh, building material. And the main damage from the actual um, from the actual building was, as you can see when you get there, there's a, there's a little bit taken out of the side. That's mostly from material coring. So they took, the humans actually took, the, uh, took away some of it to yes. build... But also, there was a fire in, two, in 
207, 217, and then an earthquake in 443 and 1349. Obviously, so again, as we were saying earlier, you've got the natural causes, and then you've also got humans. And, and you know, we do stuff like that too. Uh, I gotta be honest, around my house. Uh, hey, light bulb went out in this lamp. Um, I don't have any light bulbs. I'm gonna take a light bulb out of a lamp I'm not really using that much, put it in the other one, right? And so they were doing the same thing. They're taking building materials sometimes from one building, using that and making something else. So, uh, so yeah, like I say, you know, in, in, you think about the Eiffel Tower uh, in Paris, you think about the pyramids of Egypt, the Parthenon in Athens, Greece, the Colosseum is just one of those world heritage kind of buildings at this point, everybody associates it, uh, associates it with Rome. So, uh, is there anything else in terms of your research or stuff that you found that was cool or neat, interesting, that you want to make sure that people hear in this podcast? So, there's two things that are really, really stood out to me. So, the they made a valerium, which was basically like a ship's sail to provide shade because it would get really hot, which was really, I thought it was really cool. Because, let's be honest, and I'm going to be a little deliberately sarcastic here, right? You don't want to be uncomfortable when you're watching human beings kill each other, okay? And so, yeah, you're right. They rolled, and if they knew how to do this with ships. It's exactly what you said. Um, they knew how to to um, unfurl canvas for sails, obviously. Uh, and they just used that technology to to make an awning uh, around, so to kind of add some shade. So, exactly yes. right. And the second thing was, if you ever go and visit the Coliseum, you have to do the night tour because it's... One, there's a lot less people there, which was awesome. And then two, you get to go underneath and you get to go through all the tunnels, which the day tour you're not allowed to do. And um, going through the tunnels, it's you can actually feel like like you, this is where they were, where they actually were ready for battle. Yeah. And this is what they would bring up to bring them on the floor to kill people. And I think the advantage to being in a place like that, as you said, you, you, you really feel what they felt and they kind of experience what they felt. And I think initially, for a lot of people, certainly for me, uh, maybe for you as well, the, the initial reaction is, oh, wow, this is amazing. This is really cool. Um, and then as you stay there, you begin to remember your history and you remember what this building was used for. And you're still impressed with the architecture. You're impressed with the size. But I think some of the horror then starts to sink in as well, that this was about human slavery. This was about, like I say, blood sport for the entertainment of others. And, and you feel that kind of that claustrophobia. And you mentioned you know, just how small like the seating was. And, and, and you can imagine, my goodness, if you know you are a, a slave gladiator and you're in that space, there is a reasonable chance you might die this day, um, and, and, and being in that, and, and you realize the, the really the horror of it uh, as well. So, uh, Max, thank you so much, man. This was yeah. absolutely fascinating. I know folks are going to really uh, uh, enjoy this uh, podcast, and uh, we look forward to maybe having you back on the show sometime. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening to Rostra. You may check out all our episodes on Spotify, and follow us on social media at Garen JCL. That's at G-U-E-R-I-N-J-C-L.